Okay, great. So again, welcome for today's session. Sorry about that. Welcome to today's session. Uh, we'll be hosting Team Green, who are the Safari Committee Presser winners. I think they're the only team, probably, the winners in Kenya, essentially, because I don't know if there's anyone else who actually does this. So Kevin, um, uh, the floor is yours. All right, thanks. Um, so I'll first give an opportunity for the, the team to say hi, also so I can know uh, how much of the team is here. So um, yeah, um, I see. So if you are in Team Green, just say hello. Hello, guys. This is uh, Nguru Breton. It was a pleasure winning this thing. Kelvin will be presenting us today. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Bye-bye. Uh, yes, and uh, hello, hello as well. Uh, this is Titus Kipiano, also the part of the team, and uh, excited to, to have you here and uh, a bit of sharing of uh, knowledge together. Yeah. Um, maybe do excuse me for a minute. Huh? I'd ask them to come up and just maybe introduce themselves, like what they do and stuff like that, because also this does go on YouTube. I think it would do justice mm -hmm. because, so that people can also know who you are and when they can find you. Yeah? So if you don't mind, um, you guys can just jump back, back in and introduce yourself and uh, go on from there. Yeah. No mind. Thank you. All right. Thank you once again. I am uh, Guru Breton. I am an automation engineer at Safaricom. And uh, I work mainly on the AI side and software development. So the, the data science just came as a stretch project, which we were, we were trying to learn a few things on the side of ML and data science to just add in on what we do on the side of AI. So I'm a software engineer at Safari Command Automation Engineer. You can find me on all social platforms as Guru Breton. It's a pleasure once again to meet, to e-meet all of you. And I hope you learn a lot from my experience. Thank you. Uh, Titus. Uh, well, okay, once once again, uh, this is Titus Kipiano. Uh, I'm a software engineer as well at Safaricom. I think uh, the most of the part that uh, actually we're dealing is uh, around uh, AI and also a bit of ML. So that's what I do. Uh, I'll be very excited to to connect uh, which, with each and every one of you. Uh, probably we can uh, connect on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, just let us keep me on and be able to find me there. All right, thank you. Yes, good evening, team. This is Joel um, Rotich. <clears throat> Hope you can hear me. I'm struggling with my audio here. Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so th this is Joel uh, Rotich. Um, uh, big data engineer with um, Safaricom, um, also in machine learning operations. Um, I work very closely with um, Kevin um, in productionalizing uh, machine learning models. Yeah. Thank you. Nice, thanks. Um, is so I think that's everyone from the team. I Lona, um is is Lona. Um uh, yes. Uh hi everyone. Uh I'm Lona, uh also from Safaricom and uh, Big Data doing machine learning engineering, uh, mostly working closely with Kevin and Joel on productionalize productionizing the the models. I uh, looking forward to the session. Uh, thank you. All right. Um. So I think that might be everyone. Um. Yeah. So then. Um. I'm Kevin. As Mark mentioned, I'm Kevin Thiru. I'm a data scientist in Safaricom. I build the models that Joel and Lorna uh, productionize. Um, so I'll 
begin with uh, a fairly short presentation um, of just to set the context, machine learning, and also to share part of and um, to share our experience as well um, in building the model that got us the victory. Um, and then we'll open it up for QA. So, yeah, uh, let me just share my screen. <clears throat> Um, do I have permission, uh, permission to, um, or oh, you're not able to share? Um, oh, okay. I am, I am. Okay. Yeah. I, I put these slides fairly quickly together, <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, okay. I hope they communicate uh, effectively. So, um, yeah, we can see your screen. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah. So the first bit is setting the context. Um, AWS uh, Depressa is really good for getting your feet wet in machine learning. But what exactly, um, where, where does reinforcement learning really fall in machine learning? And um, what, what skill set does it build? Um, um, what what skill set in you does it build? Um, so um, that's that's what I'll focus on first. Um, actually, even before that, um, how do you even? So Joel and and Lorna talked about productionizing an ML solution. So um, AWS Depressa teaches you about um, how to use reinforcement learning. It gets your feet wet on reinforcement learning. Uh, which is an ML solution, but there are various kinds of ML solutions. And those ML solutions, when when now when you're talking about industry applying ML within industry in in solutions like Zuri or in solutions like um, um, yeah in solutions like like Zuri or or, or um, solutions um, uh, like fraud um, in identifying um, fraudsters before they reach our customers. Um, what does that cycle look like? What what goes into this? Um, so I'll just very quickly go um, through um, the various steps. Um, this these are th 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 these are one of the aspects of ML that sort of get overlooked because uh, people tend to focus a lot more on the shiny bit, uh, the machine learning model. But this is what goes all around it. The, there's a whole infrastructure that needs to be built and there, and there are many people that need to come together to, to make those uh, solutions happen. And so first step is business understanding, understanding what problem you're solving. So getting down to the specific problem you're solving for uh, becomes critical. For Depressa, um, it, the, the problem we're solving is fairly simple and direct and, and very fairly easy to understand. Um, fairly easy to understand. So get around the track as quick as possible. But um, when you're in business, uh, when you're in a, an organization that's trying to apply ML, um, ordinarily an issue um, stated by a business person might not be, might not be, um, um, might not translate perfectly into, um, um, it might not be able to be applied directly. Um, you need to, you need to translate their requests, their, their needs in, in a form that can be um, stated very clearly um, so that the solution you build actually ends up doing more good, uh, uh, doing some kind of good. Um, <clears throat> So once once you have business understanding, you you identified who the client is, the domain business domain, what kind of problems you are solving. So next, it's big data understanding. What data do you have? For reinforcement learning, it's 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 actually really interesting. We the the I'll I'll get into it later on how how the data is generated for reinforcement learning. But ordinarily, for normal machine learning problems, the data is out there. And you collect it, and you need to understand it. Um, once you understand that data set, once you understand that data set, it needs to be prepared. It needs to be transformed. Uh, it needs to be um, 
manipulated into a form uh, that can be used by the machine learning model, that can be understood by the machine learning model. Some transformations you might need to do are um, doing an aggregation. You have too many, you have um, day by day records for a given customer, but you only need a single record for a given customer. So you aggregate. Um, so data preparation and then modeling. Um, modeling, now this is where um, reinforcement, this is also um, now where people are really, um, really get excited about uh, where you where you test multiple models and choose the best model. In Depressor, AWS Depressor as well, there's, there's that aspect, but you have the option to choose various kind of uh, reinforcement learning frameworks. Um, but in, a, in an ordinary problem, you have very, very many options. Uh, I'll get into the kinds of models you would look at, um, the, the, the host of models you'd look at, um, but I'll, um, one, once we are done with this bit. And so after modeling, there is evaluation. You evaluate how well your model has performed and deployment. Deployment um, is now uh, where we productionize the solution, uh, the ML model. So deployment evaluation, that's where individuals like, um, uh, where MLOps engineers, individuals like uh, Lorna and Tom come in um, and modeling as well. These last three stages uh, where they come and optimize our work. Um, our data science job is to identify the problem, build the solution, move to the next problem. Um, their, their, their concern isn't, it may not necessarily be to build the most optimal solution. So MLOps come in with their software engineering skills and also their, their deep ML skills to optimize our solution and make it production ready to be able to serve hundreds and hundreds of customers and thousands of customers uh, at a given moment. Um, yeah. So um, in this next bit, I'll talk about the skill set you build as you're working with AWS Depressor, but also the skill set you build as you get into ML. Um, it doesn't matter what platform that's on, AWS, uh, GCP, wherever. If you're getting to ML, this is the skill set you will tend to build. Um, and I'll also now I'll also talk about the uh, different ML um, um, ML uh, branches that you should definitely know about if you're, um, when you, as you get into this field. So the first skill set you build is programming. Um, yeah, and, and these, are the, these are the default things you learn. So I, I'm sure a majority of you know version control and as some kind of SQL and at least at the very least Python. Uh, for those who are in data science, um, you probably know, or data, uh, data analytics, you probably know everything, or even software engineering, you, I'm sure you know a good portion of this. Uh, but now this next bit, uh, math and statistics, as you get your feet wet into, uh, and, and, and now start doing project after, after project, mathematics and statistics become very, very important, particularly for, for that, uh, the, the person leaning more towards data science. For the person leaning towards ML, um, um, ML ops, uh, this um, a, a, um, a lighter understanding of these areas. Um, the requirement is not as as high. Um, it's it's the, it's a lower bar. Um, once um, um, the next skill set you will be building, of course, it will be machine learning, and that's around supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. So these are the three branches I was talking about. Um, um, unsupervised learning, supervised learning, and reinforcement learning. And so each of these is, um, let, let's sit on this for a bit, uh, just so we, we fully understand the various um, use cases each of these um, can, can be applied in. So um, supervised learning is what most people um, well, supervised learning is what a lot of people may know. Um, people know about forecasting. Uh, that's, um, you see it on the news. Um, forecasting is, is, is everywhere. Uh, but it's, 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 a, it's a specific, it's a sub-branch of a, of a branch of, of machine learning. Um, 
Forecasting um, is, is what we do in supervised learning. Supervised learning is unique in that you have the answers. Um, you, have, you have the questions, um, which is your data set, um, and you have the answers, which is what, what, um, um, what will the weather be tomorrow? What will the weather be in the next few hours? And so, um, 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 yeah. So, for a classification problem, uh, so for depending on on what you're trying to predict, uh, uh, for for forecasting, um, if you're predicting the temperature tomorrow, then ordinarily you'd have a list of of uh, you'd you'd have your answers as the temperatures. I mean the temperature, um, the temperature of the day uh, of the following day, and you'd have uh, related data for um, um, you'd have temperature values for the previous day and the day before and the day before. You'd have a time series sort of data set uh, with, with various temperatures. And so forecasting um, would, would allow you to now predict what's the temperature the next day or what's the temperature in the next two days. Um, you, you'd be predicting a, a real value, not a Boolean value. You'd be predicting... Um, um, it's 24 point, it, it will be 24.5 degrees or 25 or, or 30.1 degrees. Um, so that's why that's why it's specifically a regression problem. And that's why um, it's specifically a forecasting problem. You're, you're, you have a trend, you're predicting the future uh, and you're predicting a real value. Classification is a little different. You, you still have the answers, yes, but you're predicting a Boolean value. So for example, fraud or not fraud, fraudulent or not fraudulent. Um, so you, again, you'll you have your data set, you'll build your model, um, and then you, you'll you try to predict, is, is, is this person a fraud or is this person not fraudulent? Something we do a lot um, in Safaricom. Um, under unsupervised learning, you don't have the answers. You have no view of, you don't know if someone is fraudulent or not. You don't know whether what the temperature will be tomorrow um at all all you have is the data and you want to just learn learn um, as much as you can from the data again there are two branches here clustering and dimensionality reduction um, um clustering is good with sub segmentation um grouping people together identifying natural groups within a data set dimensionality dimensionality reduction um there's a lot to this but let me focus on this bit big data visualization. Um, if you've ever seen um, like a, a word cloud, um, a three-dimensional word cloud where the where the where in that word cloud the they're 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 putting words that are similar close together um, and they're putting words that are different far away from each other, then you've you've sort of seen the results of a dimensionality reduction algorithm. Um, ordinarily Identif creating those relationships uh, requires an algorithm that can learn in an unsupervised way and give you um, um, give you and, and, and reduce the dimensions of, um, of of the initial data set. The, the initial data set being like all the words in English. Uh, it gives you an output and puts together the words that have uh, that um, are close in meaning. And then last but certainly not least, um, reinforcement learning. Um, game AI uh, is one thing I'm sure you've seen, uh, you've heard of AlphaGo, um, um, how um, DeepMind built it a couple of years ago. And um, you, of course, you you know ChatGPT. Um, so the, the, the initial GPT model um, um, was, was trained to predict what the next word will be. It was fine tuned. It was fine tuned using uh, reinforcement learning. Um, the the uh, where where depressor falls is here. A robot navigation. Um, so navigating an environment use, uh, based on the inputs it receives. Um, yeah. So those are the branches of machine learning. Reinforcement learning la uh, uh, lands here. Um, depressor is right here. Yeah, so that's the third skill set you will build. Fourth skill set you build is visualization skills. So thankfully, um, Depressa 
gives you a lot of these, I mean, gives you a lot of tools already uh, to visualize your performance metrics um, in really beautifully. Um, yes, it, it gives you a lot of visualizations to to show your perform your model performance really nicely. Uh, but along the way, as you progress in the journey, um, you will find picking up these skills becomes incredibly important. And last but not least, communication skills. Communicating how you did what you did and 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 uh, communicating it clearly and and concisely and and clearly in a concise way. This is one of the skills you um, you you pick up. Um, so more so for 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 the data scientist, but even for uh, um, the ML ops engineer, uh, you you're con you constantly have to communicate fairly um, um, communicate a, a lot with various uh, stakeholders. Um, if you're integrating a model with many systems, there's a lot happening there, and so you have to be um, fairly good at documenting your work and um, communicating your ideas clearly. Um, yeah. So last last before we now get into our experience um, is now uh, what reinforcement learning entails. Um, I'd like to go through this because we will talk about one piece of this. Uh, AWS Depressor allows us to um, mix our work in a mix, mix um, that the task of building a reinforcement learning model really, really simple by just um, by just um, giving us one job to do, uh, tuning a, a reward function. But but even before we get there, um, what before we get to what uh, AWS Depressor enables us to do, reinforcement learning um, follows this loop. Um, there is the agent, the environment, the action, observation, and the reward. Those are the, the five pieces um, of reinforcement learning. Um, so in the case of this, game where a mouse collects cheese in a maze you can imagine the goal of the mouse of the mouse is to collect as much cheese as possible within this grid and avoid death of course the cat is death uh, but the cheese is uh, life and so it goes to that so you can imagine um the the the, the mouse in this case is the agent the action in this case is: Should I move left? Should I move right? Should, so, sorry, should I move up or down? Up, up or down? Left or right? So if you move up, you eat. If you move left, you eat. But at some point, he has to. It, it has to start searching. Yeah. The environment is now this, this the, this, the whole grid and the positions of the cheese, um, and then the observation. Observation is now where the cheese is. So ordinarily, the agent has some abilities to observe. It can see, the, it can, um, it can see where the cheese is, and it can see, um, yeah, it can see where the cheese is. Um, and so it knows if I go towards the cheese, I get this reward. And so, so that, that's the, the, the two ideas here. The observation, where the cheese is, and the reward. The reward, the environment, um, the, the the reward by acting in in a certain way on the environment. So in this case, you you can imagine the, the mouse moving one step forward. That's their action in the environment. They move one step forward. And then their observation after moving one step forward is, ah, there's cheese here. And then of course they get a positive reward because yes, they've just landed on cheese. But you can imagine if they move towards the cart, um, that um, depending on how, um, depending on um, how you you more you build uh, the the reward function, um, if they approach the cat, they 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 will get um, a negative reward because yeah you will die. You you want to avoid prevent them from going towards the cat and train and and kind of teach them to go towards the 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 cheese. And so this is what underpins. Uh, everything, just the understanding of there's an agent, there's an environment, action, observation, and reward. So for Depressor, um, our, our car is our agent. Um, 
and um, the action. Um, so the action can be turn left, turn right, accelerate, um, and specifically accelerate at this with this amount of power. Turn left, uh, this angle. Turn right, this angle. The environment is the the road that that it's on, and um, the reward is um, is. Um, defined by the reward function so I'll, I'll i'll now i'll get i'll show you the reward function um, um in in later slides uh, the reward function that we used but what really it, it um it looks like the observations are so the 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 the, the agent the car has a camera so it has a, a tiny camera that is um uh, th uh, that uses to see the world um i think it's it so originally it used to be grayscale. I think the newer cars might have color. Um, yeah. And so th this observation, um, this is now what it uses. That small camera, it uses that to, to, to know if, if, if I go off the line, uh, what um, what does um, that? So, so then the camera is what it uses to understand the world. And based on its observations, it will tie its observations to the reward that you that you you give it yeah so oh yes yes and one other thing like if, if you want more details about how depressor works uh there's this paper here written by um a student um in a university in the u.s they're just doing a study of depressor like the framework it's 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 a little dated um from 2021 but it will give you a good understanding of um how it works uh, a beginner's understanding well, it will give you a give you a, a decent understanding of how um, it, it works, uh, the, the real nitty gritties, and it's also where I derived the images from. Um, so, just to give you a, a glimpse of one of the things he talks about, then this is how the network architecture for the depressor model looks like. So, with with the actual platform, you don't need to interact with it, but seeing how it looks is useful. Um, yeah, and so you can see this, the environment is the road, and then it gives you feedback. Um, it, it gives back this information, the state of the vehicle, the the action, the reward, and the, and the next state. Um, yeah, um, I, I won't get too much into this, um, also just for the sake of time. Um, so now to talk about our experience. Um, <clears throat> so... Team, team Green, um, we were part of, uh, th there were six teams um, uh, within in, in the competition. Uh, and it was, um, yeah, there were six teams. We were all competing to just, um, we were all competing together. Initially on a virtual race, uh, we, we set up a virtual race on the, um, on the A to Z Speedway. Um, actually, it was the 2018 reInvent Speedway. Um, and we initially kind of learned how to build our models there. So for roughly a week. And then after doing that, uh, practicing, competing, we then now went to the real thing on Decode um, and tested our models on, on the real um on the real track. So 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 this is just a screenshot of um the models we were building. Um, uh, uh, so, so these have my name because the whole team was building was building models, um, and in order to just keep track of uh, of who's which is whose, um, um, yeah, um, I I just simply used my name. Um, and so, however, we were tracking the performance of our models uh, as we were testing them on track. So we. We I, we found that virtual performance does not good virtual performance does not guarantee uh, good does not guarantee good on track performance. Uh, the the, the a, a very well a, a really fast car in the virtual world uh, and I'll show you a a, a video of that um, did not immediately immediately translate to a, a fast car on track. What we found was that. A, a stable car on um in the virtual world perform um, if, if it's stable on the virtual track and it's and there are no off tracks then the likelihood that it will perform better on the physical track is a little higher than yeah 
<clears throat> because the reason why I say that is it's always you always have the option to um to build a vehicle that is unstable on track, but it'll finish you build a model that's unstable on on the virtual track and it finishes the track really quickly. So those those kinds of models just didn't work well. And so this was our winning model. We won with a time of 6.3 seconds. We could have done a lot better. We we had better models within, uh, we, we had better models uh, to test, but we ran out of time before we could actually uh, test the rest out. But um, so, so this was our, our best performing team. Um, yeah, these are some of the notes uh, uh, we were making at that time. Um, yeah, so so now just next to next on the reward function and 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 yeah on the reward function. This is how ours look like. So really, with the as as mentioned with the reward function, you're trying to teach it what's bad and what's good. So it 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 already um, has um, it can see its environment. So observation is is um, already resolved. Um, we, we don't need to think about um, observation. The, it has the camera and so it, it observes the um, the environment and it already has uh, the, 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 the neural net. There's, there's, a, there's a very small um, neural net that's used to interpret that, the feed from the camera. So on AWS Depressor, you don't need to think about any of the mechanics of how uh, the vehicle understands the world. Um, all you need to focus on um, at the beginning as you're starting uh, is the reward function. And so with this reward function, you can specify, uh, you can specify, you get some parameters. So like what's the track width, what's the distance from the center. And so depending on what you choose, you can, you can, um, you can, um, um, you can calibrate it to, um, to 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 tell it that going off going off the track is bad going um at a slow speed is bad which is what which is what this is doing um if it goes slowly that's bad we penalize it if it's going um off track that's bad we penalize it they, they are even uh, more optimal strategies when building a reward function, especially if you don't have um, credits. So in our case, we were fairly lucky. We we had a lot of credits. So even if this reward function was was nonlinear and it, in, in, and it was taking a longer time to learn, it um, as you'll see in the video, uh, it still did learn the track. Uh, it 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 learned the racing line as well. Um, not the optimal racing line, but it learned it well enough to work well on the physical track. Um, so this is how it looked like um, on the physical track. Um, so just give me a moment. So this is how it looked like um, on the virtual track. Um, so, and, and that's without specifying the, 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 the racing line. Um, so, but as you can imagine, if, if you if, if in your reward function you show it the racing line, then it will perform even it will train much quicker, and you would need to, you you would need to leave it running for as long um, as um, as we did for this uh, mod uh, this reward function. Um, however, you should note that by doing so, your your um, kind of overfitting your model to the, your specific track, it means that that uh, model will not run well on another track. So if 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 um if if if, if uh, you're in a competition where the goal is to build a model that can run well on multiple tracks, using the optimal ra racing line uh, might not be the optimal solution. Um, yeah, so I think. Uh, that's it. It was a lot of fun, um, but I think I'll allow um, I'll allow my team members to to chime in during the Q and A session on their on their experience. Um, I've left a lot on the table. Um, yeah, uh, guys, uh, feel free to 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 share um, a lot more on how how your experience was. Yeah, so that's it from me. <clears throat>
Uh, thank you very much, Kevin. Um, I don't know if any of your teammates want, wants to chime in, but I had a few questions. So if you have any questions um, in the audience, please do. But I think I've kind of really understood some of the things that are there. Uh, huh, let me see. Um, uh, yes, uh, maybe before that, uh, I think, uh, Kevin, thank you very much. I think uh, it's been a very insightful session. Uh, you've actually really mentioned like end-to-end uh, -end, uh, everything around that. So actually we have nothing much to actually add, but I think uh, also regarding the the, the part of, uh, I'll say mechanism part of it, you know, is, is, is actually a physical uh, car, I'll say, sir. So uh, some of the factors that are actually also affected, as you mentioned, is uh, uh, kind of, the the battery charge that really matters on on the performance of the of your of your car and also the performance of the, on the model uh, this will affect the time that it will take to actually complete the the race or the yeah, yeah the, the track so that actually the battery also you make you have to actually adjust even the suspensions on the other track make sure it really aligned uh, those are those are some of the factors and uh, although the speed the speed that you actually set will really really matter that you have to actually train it with a, a good speed for you to actually be able to to have your your track you know complete a lap in the shortest time possible and also to make sure that uh, it, uh, it 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 goes well without going uh, the off track so that's it uh, that's it i think uh, maybe we'll now uh, kevin we can now take over and uh, answer any question from the from the team one uh, one last thing, one last thing, yeah. Titus. Um, <clears throat> thank you, thank you, Kevin, for for taking us through. That was quite insightful. To I want to hope to 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 the rest of the team. Um, yeah, I think you've covered everything. Probably we might not have much to add unless um, we have questions from the team. But uh, what Titus has said um, probably aged us towards the win apart from um, <clears throat> the, the last model that we did, because we, we also realized that, um, yeah, it's it's not just about the model, it's also about um, the, the the stability of the car. Um, if, if, if the, for example, the, the battery is not uh, well fitted in the car and it's shaking, it, it might um, send a different signal. Uh, from what the model is sending, because the model actually is um, like the software that is running the car. And we also need the hardware to be in shape, yeah? Uh, if you have a car that uh, one of the suspensions is not working well, uh, we might have issues with the performance. So yeah, thank you, thank you, Titus. Probably we will uh, take questions if that there. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, maybe just to start us off, um, one of the questions I had here is, I think, is it possible for one to race without a vehicle? Like the physical, well, I don't know what, what they call it. They have a name for it. It's called the Evo. I don't know, is it called an Evo or something like that? So the 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 car itself. So is it possible to do that? That's uh, my first question. Maybe, Kevin, you can take that as I, I do. When you're starting out, at least, yeah, because the EO is about five hundred dollars. So, like, is it possible to do it without it? Um. So if you don't, if if, if the question is, um, can you? Yeah, you can race without it, uh, but you'd have to race virtually. Uh, so there are a lot of virtual competitions, um, and you can do do that and and win prizes uh, before going physical. Ah. Okay. Great. So my next question. Um. I think. So as part of how you started out, I saw you had nine seconds to six seconds and all those things. So when you're starting out, how many minutes or seconds, sorry, did it take like your first model once you just ran it? How long was that? Then how did you guys move, you know, towards the six seconds that was there? And I think Edwin also has a question here, but you can go on. Hello? Uh, Kevin? Um, yeah, yeah. So, um, so the the initial the our initial time um, we 
we were racing. So, so those results are from the um, the final day, like when we're competing with the finalists. The previous day, we started with a fairly poor time. Um, Titus, do you remember? Like we were at, um, was it like 12 seconds um, or 15 seconds? No. No, actually, yeah. the, the initial one was uh, 13, eh? 13. 13. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. So we started from there, yeah. Oh, there's a question okay. in the chat, yeah? By Edwin. Um, what was the page with the uh, deaf parents? What was... I don't know, Edwin, if you can ask the question, I think that would be better. Maybe I might not have been doing justice to your question. Edu? Hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. oh yeah. There was that page uh, that uh, the presenter showed with uh, the, 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 I mean, that slide where we had that like deaf params, it was starting like it was like code with deaf params. I wanted to know whether it was workflow or what that was ah so that's that's it um you start the reward function that's that's the only um so when you're beginning out that's the only code it requires of you the reward function and it's it's just a um input on when you're when you're creating your model on aws depressor so it's it's the, you just go to the service itself, and then if, if you're building, if you choose to build a model, towards the end of that process, it'll ask you, um, give me a reward function, and and so that's where, that's where it, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So it's code. Yeah, that's Python. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Edwin. Um, there's another question here by um, Edil Khan. Sorry, if saying your name uh, wrong. Um, what was the format of the competition? Was it multiple rounds? How many com competitors were there? Was it like F1? How was that looking like? Uh, I'll allow Titus to, to take this. Uh, so, uh, sorry. I didn't get that. Hello, just repeat that. I will you. I didn't. Uh, I didn't get that question well. Eh? Maybe you can. Ah, uh... uh, okay. Let me repeat it. Huh? so the question is. Huh? What format was the competition? Were there any multiple rounds? Um, how many competitors did you guys have in terms of uh, the competition during the decoding? Uh, so, uh, so first, I think we had uh, four competitors. That is the different teams. Uh, as well, that is within within uh, they were within the Safaricom as well. And uh, so for the for the race, eh? so we had the uh, two day race. So on the first day we were going to semifinals and then uh, yeah so so we on how we we actually managed on our side is that uh, it was a kind of an open open race so whereby you could just uh, go multiple laps it doesn't matter maybe even from morning to evening but uh, I think around four hours eh? so within that four hours you can be able now to have your your track on the on the race and. Uh, so we, what was what was recorded is that uh, the best the best uh, lap for 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 what you have uh, what you have trained. So it depends. You could run uh, even twenty ten laps, and then now we'll they'll pick the the best lap your best lap in terms of seconds. So that was that was actually actually recorded. So that is where we went for the first day. For the second day, uh, same thing where we were competing with the a team black. Uh, so we are by it was kind of actually milliseconds eh? so it was it was kind of tough you know milliseconds 
is, is not even a, a move. <laughs> so that's how that's how it was. Uh, maybe also just a follow up, uh, Titus. So I think were there like a bunch of other physical cars that were being used by the other teams, right? Or are you guys all using the same uh, vehicle so, so that you race it? Then, you know, sometimes the battery also kind of reduces. So how is that just to make sure everybody had an even chance to kind of record the best lap? Uh, yeah, so uh, regarding that, every team had their own their own car. And uh, of course, you know, the, the team collaboration within the team. So what we actually were doing is that uh, making sure that on the first lap, there will be always someone to actually make sure that the battery is well uh, bought for the, we had two batteries actually. Uh, for the CPU and also for the for the for the mechanical part of it, so that was really really a factor. So every team had their own car, their own batteries. So you just have to to actually fine tune your your car in terms of you know the wheels are the wheels aligned, what's the angle that will it will take, what's the speed that was that was yeah. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you. There's another question, no? um, by Patrick. I don't know if you guys have caught it or should I repeat it. I'll just repeat it um, just for the benefit. Yeah? I think it's a more general question. Uh, hi, Patrick. Um, so he's saying, uh, oh, uh, I think I know Patrick. I hope I'm not wrong. I think I do. Uh, so he says, as uh, someone learning, uh, learning the field, he had a project in mind. So I had a project in mind to handle health mm -hmm. data. Sorry, sorry about that. Let me just leave this. Um, so in mind, um, he, um, sorry, I'll just start again. He's a bit in, uh, audible. So as someone learning the field, I had a project in mind to handle health data, create a model for personalized health recommendations. Simply put, the model should mm -hmm. use records and additional info to diagnose and suggest treatments. What approach would you best uh, suit to achieve this? This is quite a tough one, but I think, Kevin? Um. Yeah, so it depends on whether this is a... So it depends on whether this is a school project or a project you want to take to production and actually serve uh, real patients. So if it's um, if it's for school, the the buy is somewhat low, and so um, you can um, if you if you do manage to get the health data, and it would you definitely you'd need a lot of. Um, um, and, and you're you're talking about uh, diagnosing um, treatments. You need to you need to narrow down on what kind of uh, Ill ailments you want to diagnose, because um, there are millions of issues. What data do you have that can actually speak to those specific ailments? Um, that that you you need to answer that question first, and then uh, and only then. Um, um, uh, narrow down and collect labels for 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 that data set in order to build a supervised model for it. So that's if it's for school. If it's for production, um, yeah, I would recommend um, reading a lot of papers around predictive uh, uh, doing predictions on ailments. There's um, it's very hard to do this kind of work do this kind of problem using a model um ordinarily what works what i've seen working is people narrowing down the scope like really narrowing down the scope um so using um using a model to identify maybe a two mine an x-ray um that that's something where ml really shines because people get tired of looking at those x-ray documents and people can make mistakes um so just narrowing down the scope a lot more um that, that would be my recommendation before you think of uh, trying to apply ML in that kind of a problem. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, on, top of it, on top of it, um, yeah. sorry, 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 Mark. Um, just, just to add on what um, Kevin is saying, um, in, in the medical fields, what, what is really key is, uh, is the data and particularly clean data. Because you you don't want to, you know, give a, a positive diagnosis to a patient, uh, and yet um, actually the, the diagnosis is negative. 
which we really face mostly in the country. We have um, tests that are done and the patient is told that um, he has cancer and yet it is a misdiagnosis. So that, that is already data in the, in the hospital that you would want to push into your model, which is wrong. So uh, I, I think in such cases, um, the data has to be uh, uh, reliable and very clean. Uh, thank you, thank you, Rochich. Um, I think uh, another question here, it's by Diana. Uh, hi, Diana. So uh, an untechnical question. You are a team of varied, I think uh, you are a team of a varied expertise. How did you guys leverage on each other's strengths while you are staying on the timeline to deliver a solution? That's quite an interesting question. I think the whole team would actually kind of take that, but Kevin, you can start. Um, yeah, so I think uh, we were a fairly large team, um, as you can see in the image. People just um, chipped in where, where they felt they could um, based on based on the time people had because we were doing this alongside work um, and also passion as well. Um, so it really just came down to um, passion and time who who had who had the drive to do it and also who had a bit of uh, who had a, who had a, a bit a little bit of time to spare to also push it as well. Yeah. Uh uh, great, great. Um, I think as we wrap up, because I see already on uh, the top of the hour, so maybe any of the team members can just give us um where we can find you guys, LinkedIn or Twitter. Then also like a key learning you learned uh, from that um experience. Um, so any of the team members can go. Then as we kind of wrap up uh, today. Yeah, so I think um, key key here is um, is um, at least uh, knowing the craft. Yeah, you you really have to sink deep into into machine learning. Um, there's a lot that that the WS was was doing for us, but in in real real life and real world in our <clears throat> um use cases that we are doing um you really have to know what you're doing um so uh, apart from of course what uh, aws was was doing uh, as kevin was saying uh, there's a lot that aws was handling uh as was just the, probably the reward function um and um, making sure the mechanics of the vehicle is okay uh with the speed the, the angle of turn <laughs> But um, if you are focusing into into machine learning, yeah, you really need. I, I think Kevin um, gave a, a snapshot of yeah. what you need, yeah, mm. uh, to get into the field. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Ah, oh, thank you, thank you. Anyone else? I don't know, maybe they're not there. Kevin, you can finish off. I think also another question is, the last question, which was actually a serious question. Can anyone else join you guys in Watamu? I think you guys are going to Watamu, right? So can <laughs> someone join also? Because we were we were there some. Can someone also join you guys for Watamu? As we wrap up now, I think we're, we're, we're done. Yeah. Um, well, if you're, if you're willing to, to pay for your own way there, like we enjoy the extra company, we, we, we won't, uh, turn your way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So, th um, thank you for the opportunity to, um, just uh, allow us to share. Um, yeah. Um, we look forward to competing, uh, again in in the next um, round when it happens again. Uh, so just look out for us. Um, yeah, yeah. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Wow, great, great. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much.